Hey guys, hey. welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Julia Masalska, and today um, I'm hosting the very talented Ron Gibbons, and he's gonna be creating some super cool branding and packaging for you guys. So stay tuned, in half an hour, you'll be able to win some super cool Sticker Mule stickers uh, with our chat and win. And then in about one and a half hours, we'll be reviewing some of your uh, submissions for the Daily Creative Challenge, uh, which is all about um, including 3D objects into your designs. So yeah, we are very excited to have you guys all here. Come uh, to the chat and say hi to us. Write us where you're from and yeah. Um, uh, so if you would like to participate in the Daily Creative Challenge, you can uh, submit your artwork here. Um, if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and go down, you will be able to see what today's theme is. So it's about 3D elements. Um, if you click get started, you will get introduced to the whole process. And uh, you can also join the community chat right here um, on Discord and yeah, participate, get feedback and submit your artwork for us later to review. So we are very excited about that. And this is how the Discord challenge looks like. Um, here you can just post your work and later on we'll be taking a look at it. Yeah, so uh, Ron, are you excited? Yeah, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Ron is a super talented uh, designer from New York City. And um, yeah, as you can see, he has a lot of very bold, colorful work. Uh, Ron has worked for clients like uh, Facebook, Google, YouTube. Um, yeah, lots of fun stuff I can see here, as well as with local companies. Yep. Right. Um, so Ron, tell us more about yourself and what you'll be doing for the next two days. Yeah, definitely. Excited to be here. Um, I'm half of a two-person design studio called Macaroni Creative. Uh, it's myself and my wife who go and run that. And we specialize in food and beverage, packaging, branding, websites, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of CPG, which is consumer packaged goods. Um, we also do some restaurants in there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much sums it up. What I do today, we're gonna go and uh, be working on a hard uh, cider packaging project. Um, got a little head start and designed a logo for it uh, to give you a little bit of background on the project. Um, we're gonna go and be based in Kingston, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley, about two hours north of the city. Um, right now, they've had like this kind of boom from people coming up with the city. I think it's um, a bunch of the remote work possibilities. So they've really had this uh, kind of revolution with different breweries and cideries and um, that sort of thing coming into the, the picture. Um, we're gonna call them charred apple because um, Kingston went and was burned down actually in the Revolutionary War where it was the capital of New York. Um, so there's a little bit of history in there and then I'm a big fan of puns. So instead of hard cider, we got charred cider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's cool. That's a really cool approach. And welcome to all of you guys in the chat. Ed Havas, Khaled, Valentina, Mads, Jesse, Kirsty, Steve. Good to see you all. And yeah, we're happy to answer your questions. So anytime, just um, write, it, write your questions in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them. Awesome. So um, you can follow um, you can follow Ron's Macaroni Creative on Instagram. It's Macaroni under what's it called under underscore underscore Creative, and um, yeah, get, give him some support. Uh, follow him and check out his work. And on Behance, um, you can also find his uh, his profile. Um, as you can see, he has a lot of badges here, <laughs> which is very impressive. Yeah, just give him a check out his projects and maybe get some inspiration. Um, yeah, so should we get started? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do this. Cool. Um, so along with going and doing the packaging and uh, design work for it, I kind of want to take you guys through presenting a round one presentation, um, you know, when you're going and working with clients. This is a big thing when, um, you know, I was first starting out where, you know, someone might slap a logo like you see right here on in black and white on a white piece of paper. And, you know, to us, you can go and picture all the different ideas that you're going to have, how it's going to expand, how it's going to turn into all these different things. But for your client, you're really not going to go and uh, have that same uh, thought um, going into there. 
So um, usually when we go and put together a presentation, we'll go and mock things up. We'll go and expand the brand into some different color palettes um, using different mock-ups. So we'll have the packaging, then followed by you know maybe some business cards, some mm -hmm. shipper options, things like that, really to immerse the client in what their brand can actually become. So they don't just see this logo sitting on a white piece of paper that they have no idea where it's going to go like we might. Um, and, yeah. you know, this just sets you off on the right. Yeah. I totally agree. It's always good to get their imagination going on where this whole uh, logo can appear and how you can use it, right? Exactly. And it's also for you good to see. I mean, if you see it on different products, maybe you will um, adapt the logo to the, to the design of the product, you know? You will exactly. get some more ideas. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it helps us out too because you know you might think it looks great, and then once you put it on something else, then it doesn't look so great after that. Yeah. And always important to get off on the right foot with the client because you have a good round one, you're kind of smooth sailing from there. Not so good round one, you know the client doesn't trust you as much. There's kind of like tension between it, so that round one presentation is always really important. Um, so just take you through a little bit of process through what our studio Macro and Creative does is we'll go and have a discovery call with our clients first. Um, so we'll go and try to figure out things like their target audience, kind of get the backstory on there, why they started, what they're doing, what makes mm -hmm. them different, all that sort of thing. And then from there, we'll go and move into a mood, mood board phase. Um, this so then you don't just go and kind of throw everything at the client at once um, and just kind of have all these different random directions where, you know, they might like one of them sort of and they might like not like the other because it's totally wrong for them. And then just from a time management um, kind of point of view, when you're running a studio, you want to go and make sure you're going in the right direction from there. So yeah. um, I can go and pull that up now. Yeah, that would be awesome to see something. Yeah, so this is kind of a direction that uh, we're going to be working with um, for this project. Now, typically we go and have about three different options for it, but you know, for time's sake, while we're on here, we're just going to go and focus in on this one option. Um, and when we're doing these mood boards, it kind of gives us a general guideline, but I like to not take them too seriously because you don't want to dive like so far in where you're trapped in an idea, but mm -hmm. you want to still have like a little bit of a way to, you know, bounce back and forth, but you know, have something that you're inspired with that the client kind of knows where you're going with it. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned before, Kingston has deep historical roots, but it's currently going through a resurgence with growing art scene and community. Um, the direction's influenced by the, fat, the past, but modernized to target the millennial generation moving up from New York City. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and took some examples of some packaging, some uh, just different brand elements that go and have kind of a retro vibe, but um, you know, also have like a little bit of modern twist to them. And also there's some images like you can see on the brick wall, these kind of cool like old hand painted signs that are actually around Kingston, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of bringing in Kingston's actually history from it. Uh, so that's kind of where I got the inspiration from going. Yeah, um, I love that. I love like sometimes that. to walk through the city and get inspirations from the old paintings or, exactly. you know, old artwork. Yeah, it just has a nice essence and, yeah. um, you know, it's a nice way to go and you know, find some inspiration that's not necessarily from, you know, Behance or yeah. online, things yeah. like that that other designers are doing. So you kind of can pick things up that, you know, people in the community will relate to too. Um, but as I was mentioning before, yeah, we have some brick walls here that are actually shot from Kingston to kind of bring in that vibe. And then, um, you know, just some different packaging options here that kind of take like a little bit of a modern twist. So, you know, the typography might be updated a little bit or, um, you know, it might have a little bit more of a clean layout. Maybe it's a busy layout, like the stuff down here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really just a variety of things. And as I was saying, you know, this isn't gonna go and influence completely where it's gonna look just like this, but this is just so the client kind of has an idea of yeah. where you're gonna go. Mm. Um, awesome, I really like this uh, mood board and the colors are already kind of uh, popping out to me, like this orangey brick wall mm -hmm. um, combined with, uh, yeah, with this dark, um, dark blue that's very like not even blue anymore it goes into like gray and then offset white yeah exactly so. yeah so it kind of influences there and gives a client kind of like you know a tone with a color as well um, and I think that also works out with our concept going with the the charred apple mm -hmm. um, yeah so I got a little bit of a head start and design uh, a logo for this so here's just a couple lockups that we have um, we kind of want something that's a little bit rough um, you know, with the illustration. So we went and took an apple and put a little flame there to go. Oh and, yeah, I was you know. just about to say, it, it looks, uh, the leaf looks a little bit like a flame. Yeah, exactly, awesome. just to play up that burning of Kingston type uh -huh. thing, um, you know, and dive into their history. Um, and then typography wise, as you could see, kind of in the mood board, if you like zoom into mm -hmm. 
you know, some of this stuff here. It has those kind of like little pointy serves and some of this variety up here, mm -hmm. which I thought was nice. Um, you know, and a lot of these have like different curves going through them, so kind of pulling in some of that. So, you know, whether it's like, you know, these flowing curves or, you know, more of a badge type idea. Mm -hmm. um, and just pulling like typography in there. Same thing over here, it has those kind of pointy serifs. So I was looking for a font that would go and kind of, you know, bring that together. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Everybody loves your logo. <laughs> <laughs> Glad, thanks guys. Um, awesome. Cool. So we're just gonna start off in black and white, but then some people like to just do black and white pretty much the whole first round. I like to go and put some color into there and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, start messing around with stuff. So typically, we kind of describe it as a funnel. So like on the round one presentation, we might go and have a color that we start off with and that's just, you know, a starting point to get an idea across. So when the client goes and sees it, then they need to take a look at it and, you know, maybe they'll love it and we'll go and stick to something similar like that mm -hmm. or maybe they won't like it at all. And next round we'll explore like different color options from there. Mm -hmm. Usually we always dive further and further as we go down like this funnel to get to the final project. Do you also give them like color palette options? Yeah, okay. usually in the first round it depends. Like sometimes we'll give them color palette options, sometimes we'll just stick with one to kind of just, you know, get it, get the ball rolling. And then mm -hmm. round two we'll really dive into those and, you know, maybe have like three different color palette options yeah. from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Cool. So yeah, I guess we can start diving into uh, the packaging part of it. Um, you know, ideally when you go and start out, you hope that you have the dial on, which is like the mechanical file that you can go and send to the printer, it'll be all set. Unfortunately, about 90% of the time, you don't have that. So um, what I typically like to do is kind of just ballpark the design for the first round, mm -hmm. and then we kind of like go from there. Um, I also like to go and mock it up, so sometimes if I don't have a, um, if I don't go and have a dial line, I'll kind of work with the mock-up that we're using. Uh, let me just pull that up. So we'll go and use the can mock-up. We actually get like a decent amount of mock-ups from this one site called Smarty Mock-ups. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really good resource. They have a bunch where they go and um, they're really easy to use. They kind of have this grid that's going through it, so it's mm -hmm. easy to figure things out. Smart objects all put into it. So, mm -hmm. And they have a ton of different things between cans and packaging and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool. Yeah, there's also uh, a bunch of mockups on stock.adobe.com where you can actually just um, download them and activate them in your libraries, and they'll be available in Photoshop and in in design mm -hmm. and all the apps that you're using. Yeah. So and that's also pretty cool. This one's good for pretty much like simple ones, but on mm -hmm. Adobe Stock, they have a lot of cool ones too that um, go and have them like in someone's hand or, you know, being used and things like that to kind of like put it more in the environment. Yeah. Which is awesome. Um, so if you go and click into the smart object here, um, you know, this is what's going to directly be put onto the can um, and warped around there. Um, so sometimes if I don't have the dial in, I'll go and take the smart objects that we're using and kind of get the size of it from there. So on the right, you can see over here, it's uh, the pixel width mm -hmm. and height. Um, so then I might go into Illustrator and it's and just go and get set up. I also like to work without artboards to start off. I get wild. I go all over the uh, yeah. screen. So uh, Same here. Sometimes when I get And then you make the going, clean files, right? Exactly. Afterwards. Then after <laughs> I clean it all up. Yeah. But I like just not kind of having the boundaries too. I'm working all the way edge to the file. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Same here. Unfortunately, there is a limit to, uh, to an artboard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then you can still zoom out. You can still uh, make the object smaller and then, you know, put them by side and, and start something completely different. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So the grid is for your orientation where the logo will be? Yeah, or... so, so you can kind of see how they go and have it here. So there's like a whole grid right here. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of see how it gets warped into here. So like, okay. say you're like, so you look and it, you can see right here, like the lip comes down like one, two, three, about four and uh, a half like, okay, boxes I see. down. That's good. Yeah, that's so you can kind of take a look over mm -hmm. here, which is nice. And you can say like, all right, if I like start four and a half blocks down, okay, then I'm yeah. gonna go. Okay, that's that's interesting. Then I won't go and hit the lip, mm -hmm. which that's is nice. That's super cool. But yeah, a lot of times I'll just go and, ooh, that's bigger. Um, I'll just go and take like the pixel width that I see in here and go and put it into there. I think I did inches instead of there. Kirsty saying, wow, great logo, and I like the mock-up mock -up tin can. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thanks. Um, so then right here, you're going and working within um, the same dimensions that's in your mock-up. So then also sometimes I'll just go and take this, put it 
paste it into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Um, and it comes in the exact same size. So then you already have like a smart object right in here. So then instead oh, okay. of working in that file, then I'll double click on the smart object. Oh, I see. And it will be in there already. So I've got to hide the artboards again on this file. But then we can work right in here. So then mm -hmm. if I go and do something on this file, let's say we take our logo from over here and paste it into here. Oh, maybe we should outline it? Yeah, or? get it set to go. Okay. Then you can see it's updated in here. Oh, awesome. That's super cool. And then you can save it and it'll oh, be updated there. Oh, there we go. There. So easy. So That's you can awesome. see how it all translates. And then you can keep hopping back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop to see yeah. how it's going to look on your mock-up. Um, Great. And then there. But yeah, we can hop back to Illustrator and we can go and get started. Uh -huh. so and we have a chat win in 12 minutes. Oh, cruising in. <laughs> there are some super cool stickers. As you can see, I love stickers. Uh, I gotta get some <laughs> stickers going on here. Laptop's a little blank. Yeah, they'll be they'll be able to win uh, 100 sticker mule stickers. That's awesome. For free. Decorate the whole entire laptop, get it all exactly. set. Exactly. <laughs> I'm more of a notebook sticker guy. Like my notebooks are covered in stickers like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. Cool. So yeah, now we'll start going and design the can design. Uh huh. Also, another thing that I go and do sometimes is um, I'll go and kind of take our dimensions that we have here and then make a separate file. So this has some extra stuff on the side as you kind of can go and see from our mock-up that, you know, I put this over here and then once you get into here, it's like kind of on the side of the can. So I'll go and shrink it a little bit to, you know, about what you'd see like for an ac actual can. To okay, kind of this one, it the there. second one that you just copied is not connected to Photoshop yet, right? It will be connected to Photoshop. So it this is, this whole yeah. file right here is a smart object. So mm -hmm. if I were to save it right now, it would kind of throw it out of whack like a little bit mm. and see so you'd be like all over the place oh, like that because you see, see the two boxes. Yeah. So I'll just work in that and then I'll go and bring it over to here. Oh, okay. So now I kind of see like, you know, where my can area is going to mm -hmm. be and then where the actual other area is going to be. So I might just go and like even just hide this background here mm -hmm. and then lock the back so I don't mess with it. So that's like command two to go and lock it for a nice quick shortcut. Mm -hmm. um, so now I kind of have like ballpark dimensions in my can design right here. Um, but then now if I go and save it, we'll be back back on track. And you can kind of see right there that you have the lines from the other grid. And you know, when we go and dive into it and save it into here, I'll be turning that off eventually. So mm -hmm. then you don't have the hard lines, but you can kind of see where we're going now. Yeah, awesome. That's super cool. Cool. Yeah, so now we kind of have this logo right here that's, um, you know, it has some visual like um, appeal to it itself. It kind of has a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the more simple lockup that we came up with originally right here that's a little bit simplified, but I think it's nice to kind of have the descriptor on it so people can know when they pick up the can, you know, what yeah, kind they're going to Yeah, in the store, right? Exactly. So they can see what is this product <laughs> about. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. since it's mainly typographically based, like back to our mood boards that we had before, like a lot of these yeah. have a lot of type. Yeah. So the client's going to be expecting something that's more uh, typographically based yeah. um, and kind of have this cool little arches and, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. So we're going to stick to that kind of direction. I think the logo would be like a, a perfect like starting place for that. So I'll yeah. probably blow this up a little bit to go and make it, you know, the focal point that we have going on here. And I think the hierarchy here is also really nice. That uh, chart Apple and the Apple itself, which is the brand, you mm -hmm. know, it pops up first and then you see, uh huh, organic hard cider. That's what you read second. So it's always very important to keep the hierarchy, right? So, exactly. so the, the person can actually see the more important things, which is the brand, right? The brand yep. always wants to be first. Exactly. And then uh, what the product is, the, the product description. Yeah, so. for a little descriptor. And, you know, kind of with this brand that we're taking on too, it has the HV New York, which is Hudson Valley, New York, mm -hmm. uh, which is like the region that Kingston's in. Oh, yeah. um, so since that's like a pretty big like factor within their brand, like I yeah. thought it would be nice to have that as like a little descriptor and yeah. kind of playing with, you know, that look that we're going for. Yeah, it gives this crafty feeling that it's like a local product. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah, and up there too, since I mentioned before, like a lot of New York City people are coming up, they really like that craft kind of mm -hmm. element from like the smaller towns and things like yeah. that. So, you know, to appeal to that demographic, it's definitely good to kind of up the craft vibe of everything. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So next we'll probably want to put on like some different information. So, you know, some things that we might need or, um, 
like the alcoholic volume. Um, yeah. We have Kirk here from London. Hey, Kirk. Eunice from Morocco. Hey. I always love how international this chat is. Like, there's literally people from countries I've never like been to, or you know, it's so interesting. It's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Let us know where you're from in the chat. <laughs> oh yeah, adding some more information. Yeah, exactly. So we'll need the fluid ounces. You're mm -hmm. gonna need the alcoholic volume. So we gotta decide how strong we want to make it. I don't know. Go with something decently strong, mm -hmm. but not too crazy. Mm -hmm. So these will be details that we'll have to go on the front of the can just for legal reasons. Yeah. So we know we have them. Then we need to go and get a flavor. Um, Got to think of some good good flavor to go and have in here. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, we have Phoenix, Mexico, Denmark, Brazil, Australia. Wow. Lots this is of different awesome. places. Mars. Super cool. From Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. How'd you get over there? <laughs> Did, have you heard that NASA was recently having this um, thing where you can sign up on a ticket and that ticket is getting on the like chipped or something and brought to Mars in 2020. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's wild. So you can actually sign up on the NASA website, I think, and then your name will be taken to Mars in 2020. That's pretty wild. I actually saw something else. They're trying to put these like blanket things on top of it where it kind of blocks the heat from escaping from their atmosphere uh -huh. to try to be able to grow plants on it and stuff, which oh, is pretty wow. wild. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Hello from upstate New York, Paul. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Paul. Good to have you here. Melissa, living in LA now. Christopher from Burbank, Tampa, Florida. Adi, welcome. <laughs> awesome. So for the flavor, I think we're gonna go apple crisp to go and play on there, but also play off that burning Kingston thing, a little crisp there. All about the puns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to go and try to find a typeface that we want to go and work with this. Mm -hmm. So we won't want to use the same one as the logo type because we want that to go and stand out. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a nice condensed look to it. I mean, if we want to hop back into like our resources a little bit, you know, they have kind of some condensed things going throughout here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the secondary type where right here, it's like a little bit more ornate, but then here it's a little bit more standard. So maybe mm -hmm. we can go and find like a nice condensed thing to go and use with it. Um, let's see. Howdy from Denver, TJ, welcome. Hey, TJ. Awesome, Wisconsin. This kind of wow. feels nice. It kind of has like the corners of it kind of have the same kind of like oh, harsher yeah. angle that yeah. these kind of it have. Yeah, it definitely works. I can see that too. Um, What's the, what type of face is this? This one's alternate gothic, uh -huh. number three. So this one, it, this is pretty cool. It has like a different, a uh, couple different like uh, variations to it. So like I think alternate one is like really condensed and then mm -hmm. it kind of spreads itself out. So back between there. Mm -hmm. but. Kind of like three of the best, not not that intense. Mm -hmm. um, so then I also want to go and think it's going to look nice if it, we got some uppercase. So if you go to type, you can change the case easily throughout yeah. here. Um, so we're just going to bring that up. Mm -hmm. Bring this over. So probably after the logo, you want the flavor to be, you know, one of the most prominent things in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because once you get associated with a brand and you see the logo, you're kind of going to gloss over that and be like, which flavor do you want from there? So mm -hmm. that'll be the next one. Um, you know, it might be nice to track it out a little bit. If you hold down yeah. an option and you arrow key left or right, that can go and do it from the keyboard too. Awesome. At one of my first jobs, I had this guy that I used to go and work with and he was like all about the key controls. Like, oh yeah. If he saw you going up into the menu, he'd, <laughs> work be like, optimization. he'd be like, nope, use this one right here. So really awesome. got into going using the different Yeah, once you get used to it, an application and you use it in a certain way, it's really hard to like relearn things. So exactly. it's, if you start, if you start learning right now, learn it right, learn it with the shortcuts and all the different uh, yeah, commands that you can, where you can optimize your work. Yeah, exactly. Because once you awesome. get rolling with it, you want to stick to it. Yeah. Uh, and it just it becomes part of your workflow. Then you yeah. see someone else going up into the menu and you're like, stop, stop. Yeah. And in three and a half minutes, we have the chat to win. So stay tuned. Yeah. Got to win those it's stickers. It's be fun. Cool. Yeah. So we might want to give it a little bit more prominence here. So maybe going putting something around it, like a rectangle. Might go and help it out a little bit from there. Go and bump up like the stroke a little bit on there. Simon is saying, nice font. <laughs> Thanks. Charlie's saying, hey buddy, crushing it. 
Hey, Charlie. That was actually my creative <laughs> director oh, at, yeah. uh, oh, at my old job awesome. before. Good to have you here, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so then you can go and use these up here to go and align different things. So you can mm -hmm. center align it, go and put it in the middle of the box there. Yeah. Um, and then also to get some of like the spacing correct. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll use the direct select tool and grab some of the sides. Mm -hmm. um, one trick, actually Charlie was the one who showed me how to do this. If you hold down shift, it goes 10 pixels around. Uh -huh. So it kind of has bigger jumps than like if you just went like smaller oh, there. So okay. a lot of times when I'm it. working on something, just to kind of quickly do it, I'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Then I'll grab like the other side like that too. Because if you're scaling a rectangle, um, it's not going to come out to be the same. Like even yeah. if you just scale it from the middle, the top yeah. and bottoms aren't going to come out to be the same. So it's a nice way to go in. Yeah, makes sense. And jump it and be able to edit back and forth. And then I'll go into the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Comes like rhythmic after a while. <laughs> That's funny. I'm also a loud typer, so I'm sure my wife, when we're sitting there working, will be going and she'll be like, poof, 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 poof. <laughs> the whole entire time. Um, oh. Another way you can go and do it too, which is like a nice tool, um, if you go and grab, you go to object path, and then you can go and do offset path. So like, say I did just go and size it down to like, you know, the size of the type that we have here. So I'll go and bring it into there. Um, bring it down like that. If you go to mm -hmm. object path, offset path, brings up this little dialog box that mm -hmm. will go and scale it like proportionally. So, you know, if you go and put like 0.25 inches or, you know, if we want to go and scale up like a little bit more from there, you know, you can really edit it and go mm -hmm. and scale from there. I like doing the little click thing because then you can kind of get it, um, you know, precise. And if, you know, you're like, yeah. oh, that one's like a little bit too far off, then you can go and edit it easier from there. Yeah, that's a good tip. But we can just go with 0.5 for right now. So we got that nice little box going there. And see, I feel like it's like a little bit too tight right now. So going back to my clicking. Mm -hmm. Mohammed is asking, what's the font of Apple Crisp? That's the alternate Gothic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Alternate Al Gothic. Gothic. Number three. Number three. So it's not as condensed as like some of the other ones that, mm -hmm. that we have in there. Um, cool. So then we'll have to put some other information on there. I actually might start diving into color like a little bit to get like a little bit of a feel because right now, you know, you can kind of get the layout going, but you don't really know how it's going to feel until you go into there. So mm -hmm. we'll go and work on getting a background color. Also, when I was going and creating the logo here, um, you know, a lot of times when you're going to create, you'll go and use like different strokes or mm -hmm. outlines. Uh, this kind of had a mix here between uh, the shape that I went and made mm -hmm. um, and then it has like a little stroke with uh, oh, a rough okay. on it. Mm -hmm. So to go and get that kind of effect, you can go into effect to store and transform and then roughen and you can oh. get these like little little variations in there so you can kind of you know up it or down so it can get pretty oh. crazy but it's gotta yeah. be, it's gotta be pretty <laughs> that is pretty crazy <laughs> it's gotta be pretty slight like if you're going in there um so it's like 0.05 percent or something yeah. like that and you can also edit the details here so there'll be more details it's like an up you it's go. like an old school print exactly. you know where it's not precise and it's like a little rough around the edges exactly just gives that little touch yeah. of you know a hand done feel and then you can have corner ones or you can have smooth ones that smooth it out that's really cool that's actually part of this whole style right yeah exactly I mean, yeah, to kind of bring in that kind of retro look And we have the chat of wins. Oh, nice. So you guys, all you have to do is type anything in the chat to be considered to win 100 sticker mule stickers. So just type away and we'll be right back. <laughs> time for the fireworks so type away and we'll have a winner very soon so just keep on typing type your favorite um, color type your favorite letter anything just just type something <laughs> and uh, yeah it's that easy <laughs> we from Brazil I, ju I just read random comments um, I love stickers yeah me too <laughs> I love stickers Awesome. Wow, we have so many comments here. Oh, here so exciting. And who's the winner? Who's the winner? Who's the winner? 
And winner is TJ Russell. Hey, Great. TJ. Congratulations. You won 100 die cut 3 by 3 inch um, sticker mule stickers, and you'll get. You got contacted shortly over Behance, and for all of you guys who haven't won the stickers, you can use uh, you can go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Life 19, and you'll get 10 die cut stickers for only one dollar and free shipping in the U.S. So what can you want more? Yeah. Um, I think it's a really good deal. So Definitely. I also I also did mine recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, congratulations, TJ, and we're gonna go back to uh, the chart apple organic hard cider design. All right, hopping back in. Yay. Um, yeah, so that's how you can get the kind of roughing effect that's going across it. Um, and then also um, to make these little details here, sometimes I go and use strokes, sometimes I use like the blob brush tool, um, which is pretty cool. You can do different shapes and you know, just come out that way. Mm -hmm. um, nice and smooth. Um, but the thing is right now, since we're starting to apply a different color right now, these are just white right here. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to go and get rid of those guys. Um, so a lot of times I'll go in here. I'm just gonna ungroup this so it's easier to go and grab everything singularly. Yeah, in uh, 56 minutes we'll be reviewing your um, creative uh, challenge submissions. So yeah, make sure you submit your artwork. To yeah, be... get those going. Yay, it's gonna be exciting. It's always so much fun <laughs> to review those. Awesome. Cool. So we're going to hop in here and I like to go to tight or uh, object path um, and then I outline the stroke so it's all like a thick stroke from here. Mm -hmm. um, then I use the direct select tool mm -hmm. um, to go and select everything here. And then we'll hop into the pathfinder and I'll break everything apart. Um, so then when you break it all apart you can hit here and you can like click out of these. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't see it here, but let me unlock this back layer. We'll turn it to something else just so it's easier to go and see. Um, just throw like a random color back there. It's actually pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but as you can see, we kind of have the white here. So you can click oh, in there yeah. um, and you know delete things out. Like a nice way to go and be able to do it quickly is if you take the direct select tool, you select like a white color. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to select um, object, or no, same, sorry. Um, and then you can pick between fill color, fill color and stroke, uh -huh. opacity, so you can pretty much select everything in your document. Um, if you're using the direct select tool and you can go and do that at the same time to nicely be able to grab it. Or if you're like inside a group, then um, it's just gonna affect what's inside that group, which is mm -hmm. nice. So I'll select fill color here. So as you can see, you grabbed everything that's white and just delete that all out with one click. Um, and then I'll select the rest of the apple and I'll use the pathfinder over here to merge everything together. So we got one solid shape. Mm -hmm. Um, so now when we're adding things, we're switching like the background colors, then, you know, it will go and affect the logo and we'll be all good to go. Um, awesome. Cool. So this is kind of a nice color right here, but I'm kind of thinking to go and try to get like a little bit like of a burnt color to kind of go with that like charred. Mm -hmm. So we'll go down in here, you know, maybe something of this dark red kind of version right here. Um, and then obviously we'll have to go and, you know, make our type like we need some contrast. Exactly. So you can go and see everything. Won't be able to read that black off any shelves. Um, so I just got to go and put my logo back together. Just group that mm -hmm. in there. Um, Command G. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll hop into there and try to find something right here that can have like a little bit more contrast. Um, you know, if we bounce back to, to our mood boards, like a lot of this kind of has a little monochromatic kind of look to it, which I think plays up like that retro vibe, like mm -hmm. this down here, I think does like a nice job of that. So yeah. we'll probably try doing something similar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's cool to have uh, an inspirational board like that because you're not really copying any design, but you're just taking small aspects from different designs, right? Exactly. That you combine in your new way, which is a new design. Exactly. So. Yeah, design is nothing else than a combination of different uh, ideas that have been existing before. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, because everything you're going to go and, you know, tie back to in your mind, it's all these kind of references of different things you've seen. So, you know, yeah. when you're coming up with something else, like everyone's going to relate to different things that they've seen in the past. Yeah. So you kind of want to reference some of those things here or there. Exactly. Um, well, yeah, we have a color like that. Or maybe awesome. we want to go and bring it into like a little bit more of like an orangey kind of feel to it. Yeah, something like that's kind of nice. We can start off there and then, you know, we'll dive into color like a little bit later, but, you know, direct select or uh, eyedropper tool, which is just uh, command I to go and mm -hmm. hop into that. Go and do that. 
I like to go in color, I'll take the hex code as well so then I can e easily just pop it in, especially mm -hmm. if we're using like a more simplified color palette here. So I can just dive in here and paste it into when we're doing different strokes and things like that. Um, they up the stroke like a little bit more on this guy too. Mm -hmm. Courtney saying, hey from upstate New York, great tips from Ron, looking killer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Court. <laughs> awesome. Cool, so we have that. Um, you know, we have these display, these uh, different legal things that we have to put on. Um, you can just write them on, but maybe we can go and figure out a way to kind of make them look a little bit more visually appealing. So I want to take, you know, maybe a similar type style from there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might be nice to go and stack these up too. Um, make them like a little bit more prevalent there. Mm. That might go and take a while. If we just go and click up, so I might just copy this out, delete it from there and put these into two separate text boxes so you can mm. easily just scale them up. Yeah. So if they're not in, if you make a text box like this over here, you just type in your uh, constraint to the text box you have. But in mm -hmm. Illustrator, if you just go and type straight up, then you can go and scale that easily like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's what we did down here. So we can just scale this nice and easy up. So, you know, maybe mm -hmm. something like that would be a nice touch to Do it. Do you have any like ratio numbers that you can like orient yourself where you can like basically say, okay, this proportion is good? Uh, it really depends what you're going with, but like, you know, this obviously we want it stacked on top of each other. So, you know, I think it might lock up nice visually if it kind of has about the same width to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really depends on like the kind of design you're doing. Like sometimes it's nicer if you just go and have something that you know, if you had this on like two lines right here, yeah, um, you might want the number to be like the height of that mm -hmm. um, instead. So kind of making like a little bit of a grid system going with mm. whatever you might be doing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's easier for the eye, right, to see uh, what belongs together. Exactly, because you start associating it. Like you see this as one object here mm -hmm. when they're kind of on the yeah. same height mm -hmm. um, as each other. Um, yeah, but yeah, we can flip back over here, scale it out. Command R goes and puts the grids or the rulers back on the side. Mm. Then we can go and pull these guys over to kind of make sure that we're lining everything mm -hmm. up. Awesome. For all of you guys who are here for the first time, welcome. And we're streaming every week, so you can literally um, just be online and watch us while you work or while you do something else or just watch and learn. Um, yeah, we're always excited to have all the new people here. So yeah, you're also welcome to ask questions. So Ron um, yeah. is very happy to share his knowledge with you. So if you have any questions, let us know. Oh, Heidi's asking, Ron, can you talk about your approach to client acquisition? Is it mostly new relationships or long-term partnerships? Yeah, so we do a lot of new relationships uh, and then they kind of like turn into partnerships from there. So we specialize in mostly the food and beverage industry. Um, so from there, there's, there's a lot of connections in there. There's a lot of like food investors and things like that who might work with one company and then another company, um, you know, from there. Um, so a lot of times we'll go and work with one. If they like what we're doing, then the food investor might go and see it or, you know, they might, or the company might have a friend who's in the industry and be like, hey, like these are good designers to work with. And, you know, it kind of snowballs from there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, typically how I've been getting like a decent amount of work. Um, you know, from the beginning, it's really just about putting a lot of your work out there. You know, we're on Instagram, we're on Behance, yeah. um, you know, all those different sites that are out there and we keep posting different things like that. Um, yeah, it also increases uh, the way people find you on Google or something. The more pages you have, the exactly. more the chance that they will find your profile on uh, Google or yeah. anywhere else. Exactly. Really. And then just trying to find like a niche in there. Like, you know, it's nice to put it on those designer sites, but it's also nice to go and have like, you know, an option where, you know, if you're specializing, say like we do in the food industry, then you might want to go to places where people who own food companies are going to go. So mm -hmm. that could be, you know, a Facebook group or, um, you know, different food meetups or things like that, where uh -huh. you're going to be the only designer there with a bunch of people who have, you know, restaurants or, you know, packaged goods or things like that, that, you know, they need oh, design yeah. for. Do you so. also go to shows? And yeah, but yeah, there's like people. fancy food show and like things like that that are usually in like they usually have like a West Coast one mm -hmm. and then like a East Coast one from there. Um, and you can go and hop into there and just like, you know, getting into an environment where there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, don't do what you do. It's always nice. Oh, yeah. It That's a good idea. From there. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think acquisition uh, of clients is always about like really talking to people. You know, profiles everywhere can help you. At 
until to some point until some point but um really i think you can find your clients by communicating on events or talking to your friends talking to people you know just make sure you um, talk about it and let people know that you're a designer otherwise nobody will know and nobody will ever ask you to design something <laughs> exactly so much is uh, like word of mouth like and you never know who's got like a friend of a friend of a friend yeah, who has exactly. like a company exactly. that they yeah exactly um, so that's always like a nice way to go and do it and then you know the main thing is it's like once you get that first client just you know go and do the best work you can and you know really try to establish that relationship because mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll start off and we'll do branding and packaging for someone and then from there we'll go and you know maybe do some trade show graphics or mm. you know uh, put like email blasts together, you know, different projects for the day to day. Or a lot of these clients yeah. too, they start off with one product and then they have like different SKUs that they need launched or, mm -hmm. you know, dive into these different areas and stuff like that. And they'll come back to someone they can trust if, you know, you yeah, do a good job course. the first way. Yeah, it's easy. If you know someone, why should you look for someone else, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so we can go and put these in here. Um, you know, like I was saying before, that kind of with this brand, um, you know, the whole thing is kind of, you know, being from the Hudson Valley and being in there. So it might be nice to put like, you know, something about that, like um, made in the Hudson Valley. Um, you know, we can branch off and break it up so we can lock it up like in different ways. Um, you know, it might be nice to like stack these guys up since they have like sort of like a similar visual weight. Yeah, mm -hmm. same over here. And then maybe we can go and bring in like a different element. Maybe it's like a picture of New York State or something like that to kind of, you know, tell people where it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they're not from, from the area. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys. So we're going to have those locked up. And then we could probably go over here to uh, Adobe Stock. And we could probably find like a New York State image. And there is also a question regarding copyright. Stacy is asking, how do you copyright the images or work that you post online, social media, etc.? So with social media, I know there's like a new thing about like Instagram and stuff like that, kind of owning the content that you go and put out there. Um, you know, posting it also is a way to kind of copyright your uh, designs that you go and do, which people can go and grab it from there. But by posting it, you kind of have a date on when you went and created it. Oh, yeah. So, um, exactly. you know, that, that, that holds up like a little bit. I mean, really, once you know you design a logo or something like that, you want to go and bring it to get it trademarked or mm. um, you know copyrighted through like an actual government agency, so it's like locked down like that. Um, mm. You know, you really don't want. It, it's unfortunate if someone goes and steals your design on online, but and you didn't post it yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, something like that. But wow. but then they can't really be stealing it if you didn't post it because <laughs> yeah, because where would they take it from? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a good point. I mean, if uh, you posted something earlier, then obviously you posted were the earlier. one who created it for earlier. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. That's awesome. Yep. Cool. So we got this uh, New York State image right here. It's nice. Is it from a? Adobe stock and it's all outlined for me and things mm -hmm. like that. So I can easily just go and Easy. place that right in there. <laughs> yeah, cool. Don't need time tracing it or yeah. you know, going around like that. Oh yeah. So just place that little guy in there. See, so, you know, then we got a kind of like nice little lock up going in here, like a nice oh, secondary yeah. type thing. Bring that cool. over. Love that. Looks like a little chicken or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bringing that there, go and align it nicely. Um, Hiroaki is asking, how many days or weeks or months do you normally spend on a package design like this? Um, it really depends. Like pretty much the whole process, uh, you know, it's usually about I'd say like six to eight weeks uh, once you go and get through like all the revision rounds and things like that. The first week we typically spend. Uh, it's probably like a week or two weeks for the first round of designs, depending on the client's timelines. One thing you'll find out with the food and beverage industry is everyone's everyone's in a rush. There's always like something that they're trying to go and hit. So, yeah. you know, it usually takes like a week to two weeks for our first round. And then from there, it's usually probably about a week turnaround time for all the revision rounds and things like that, depending on their feedback. Obviously, if it's, you know, some pretty intense feedback, we might go and tell them that it's going to take a little bit longer or, you know, mm -hmm. occasionally if we can go and trim it down a little bit because it's like, oh, we love it. You mm -hmm. know, just do this like small thing to it. Then mm -hmm. we'll go and, you know, do that sort of thing. 
Yeah, and it's also I feel like it's always about the communication. How many levels of decision makers are on this design, right? Exactly. So you send it to one person, and they have to get uh, get it proved by the other person, and so on. So it depends also on with how how many people you're communicating. Exactly. Um, Because if you're doing it for yourself, if you are the decision maker, that's the fastest, right? Exactly. Because I can cruise through this because I'm making all the decisions. Exactly. I'm the client right yeah. here. So yeah. I think it looks good. It looks good. But yeah, exactly. You know, when other people have to go and talk to a lot of different people, um, you know, it really depends how long it's going to take. And another thing too is there's a lot of, uh, you know, hiccups that you can go and hit manufacturing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a really complex process going in, uh, you know, going and launching a food and beverage pack, like client or, uh, you know, type of food from there. Um, it really varies. You know, they have to formulate the whole thing. They have to work with different manufacturers and packaging mm -hmm. and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if there's a hiccup with kind of getting the, the dye line or something like that, you know, that can put a delay in it. You know, maybe they have a formulation thing that they still have to work through. So they're taking a while to go and get you feedback on there. So it really can extend. Oh, Usually by the way, it's not a can anymore. It's a bottle now. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that's where you have to like uh, start it over, right? Exactly, and then you're like, all right, well, this is gonna take a bit longer to go and work yeah. through all this, yeah. or like even just the dimensions, like going yeah. back and forth. It, you know, really can go and edit it from there. So typically, you know, how right now we're kind of just eyeballing things. Well, that'll be okay for the first round, but you know, by the second round, third round max, we really try to go and have them have the packaging because we always explain to them that you know if they switch the size, it could affect the design because you know maybe we just can't fit as much content on it or something has to be smaller like that. So you know it really goes in uh, depends from there. Um, but you know the main thing is just being clear with the client and letting them know that that could happen. You know telling them that if they don't have this by now, we might have to go and switch it up or it could delay the process. Mm. Um, you know really the whole thing with client. Uh, you know, relations such as being uh, transparent with them. Mm -hmm. Joelle is asking, how do I get my first client? How did you <laughs> get your first client, Ron? My first client, when I got out of school, um, you know, like I said, I'm from like Kingston, New York, which is upstate. And I just like looked around, saw some things that were designed and kind of just typed in online, like, you know, who designed this. So I just sent my, you know, portfolio out to a bunch of like different people in the area, um, different design companies and things like that. A ton of them, like, you know, hundreds and just hope to get some bites back on it. And eventually someone's like, oh yeah, I have a freelance project that you can go and do from there. And mm -hmm. um, that worked out. Another good way to go and, uh, you know, start getting clients or, you know, get the kind of work that you want to get is to go and, either make a project like this where it's a personal project, or you know, if you have a friend doing something, maybe go and help them out with what you're doing. Um, obviously, you don't want to go and work for free um, you know, for someone else and not get any, you know, anything back from it, but I'm a firm believer that if it's in your core and you see the value that you're going and doing, then it's okay um, because you're getting the value from it and you're dictating everything. So, um, you know, I used to work with a lot of tech clients and I kind of wanted to get in the food industry and I had this really good friend who uh, has a deli like um, in Kingston. So I was like, here, I'll help you out. I'll go and, you know, yeah. do some branding for it and stuff like that. And from there, uh, one of my agency jobs went and found me on Behance actually mm -hmm. with that project on there. And that agency did all restaurant, uh, you know, branding and packaging and uh, web design and things like that. And they really yeah. liked my restaurant work that I just had on there that, you know, I helped a friend out with. And from there, I got a job at that company and, you know, did a bunch of work from there. And that's really what got me into the food and beverage industry, all because I just did a project yeah. to help out a friend. Awesome. Um, and that's, I think that shows that um, if you really want to work for a certain industry, you really have to work on projects like that. Exactly. So you determine your future by working on projects that you like right now. So um, yeah, it can be a passion project or it can be um, anyone that you know that owns a business. Um, so yeah, just exactly. uh, you have the control where, uh, what, what industry you want to be working with. So that's also good to kind of uh, concentrate on something, right? That you exactly. like for the future. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be accepting any other jobs, but um, I mean, you always go better with what you like mo the most, right? Yeah, because you have that passion behind yeah. it and things like that. And then also, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of work that, you know, I did along the way that wasn't the most glamorous stuff or things like that. That's not yeah. that fun, but, Same you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, you know, we still do that, like on the side and things yeah. like that. You know, you got to pay the bills and, yeah. um, you know, but just treat every project like, um, you know, like it's a huge project, even if it doesn't seem that huge to you. Yeah. Um, at one of my first jobs, I used to do presentation decks like a ton, like in mm -hmm. PowerPoint. I could do so many things in PowerPoint that you guys couldn't even <laughs> imagine. But, um, 
But it was great experience because it was for you know some of those bigger clients, like I was mentioning, like Facebook and stuff like that. And they have really strict guidelines, and you know yeah. type needs to be a certain way and things like mm -hmm. that. So it really gave me a bunch of fundamentals and typography and things like that. So you know really just try to take whatever project you can go and do and see what you can pull from it. So even if it's not you know the most fun project, there's probably some things you can pull from it, like mm -hmm. you know working under like stricter brand guidelines or things yeah. like that, where um, you know. It will go and give you skills that you can use on more of the fun projects when you eventually go and get there. And yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, cool. Eric is saying, I want to do webs related related to fashion only. Well then, start doing fashion projects. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, do some fashion <laughs> projects. Throw that out there. Put it on Behance. All that yeah. good stuff, and you know, have it be seen from there. You know, make a personal project. Yeah. And that's how you can share it too. I mean, the good thing is on Behance um, that you can actually publish your portfolio for free. Exactly. Like you can have your own portfolio website for free based on your Behance uh, portfolio. So yeah, that's exactly. amazing. Exactly. Yeah, I actually, since I started Macaroni, we use that as like our, uh, you know, web, our own personal website. Mm -hmm. And I actually don't have a personal website like anymore. Some of my work I had before I started mm -hmm. Macaroni, but I still have my Behance portfolio up. So I still have like a place where I can go and show like a ton of that work. That's all mm -hmm. good work and could, you know. You can get also get a domain future. name mm -hmm. uh, and then make it forward to your Behance portfolio, which is like, um, I mean, I don't mean the Behance portfolio that you have on Behance, but I mean the uh, Adobe portfolio mm -hmm. that's based on your Behance project. So they're kind of like connected. You should check it out. Definitely, it's a really cool tool because you can also like turn off and on the the projects that you would like to show uh, depending on like if you're if you're looking for a certain kind of uh, position, you know. So that's a really cool tool. Definitely. Um. Cool. Yeah, so hopping back into this like a little bit, um, you know, I like to just check like midway kind of like where we're at. So I'll save this smart object as I was talking through before. Mm -hmm. um, and if you hop into here, you'll see that it updates mm -hmm. over here. So then we can like save it and just get like kind of an idea how Ooh. it's starting to look on the can. So it starts coming to life a little nice. bit like halfway through uh, when you're diving in there, which is really nice. Um, so you know you're, you know, this just is not- This super cool. This looks like a very, very ripe apple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is what you want from a cider company, right? Yeah. You want these like fresh, yeah. nice apples. And I don't think dark red is a color that's being used a lot in, uh, in ciders. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like a good way to differentiate them a little bit, tie back to the name. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a nice feel overall. It feels like a real apple because you know everyone designs apples as that bright red, but yeah. you know, how often do you get an yeah. apple like that? True. <laughs> yeah. But cool, yeah. So this just lets us check in like a little bit, see where we're at, and then we can hop back into our Illustrator file to go and add some more into here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a nice detail there. Um, and then we might want to go and put in some like you know descriptor type. Maybe like people want to know what the apple crisp is from there. Um, so I'll just kind of take this over here. And we got to figure out something to go and put in there. Um, let's see. Joel is asking, where did you find the mock-up? Can uh, you tell us the site again? Yeah, that's on Smarty Mockups. Mm -hmm. They have a bunch of different resources on there, which are really nice. Like they have a bunch of packaging ones, boxes, and things like that. Um, you know, cans, bottles, like things for um, you know cream canisters, like pretty much anything you can think of for like the you know packaged goods industry. They have them on there. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm not a copywriter, so if any of you guys have a good description for this. Cider uh, as good as your grandma's dessert. <laughs> I love it. Something like that, but if you guys have something better, please send along. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for a slogan, or is it, is it a slogan? Would it's you... like a little descriptor. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's funny. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun for now. <laughs> I'll be like, oh yeah, grandma de grandma's dessert was always good. <laughs> yeah. Mackenzie just went and put uh, the Smarty mock-ups there. Yeah. That's, that's my wife, the other half of Macaroni oh, Creative. Oh yeah, welcome, Mackenzie. <laughs> so good to have you here. Awesome. So you can put that guy in there. Let me bring this down. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, it's coming out really there. good. Yeah, it's starting to come together. You know, we can hop back in, like I was saying before. See what we got going. 
Yeah, so it's starting to come together. I think like right here, the type hierarchy is getting kind of jumbled a little bit. So maybe we can find a way to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, switch things up here where it's making this a little smaller, maybe mm -hmm. editing a little bit. Like I said before, I kind of like to hop back into these mood boards and mm -hmm. see things in here, kind of look at, really for these things, I'm focusing mostly on like these brick walls that are in here because I just think they're, they're really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, right here, there's a little bit of like an italicized, which is different. So maybe we can go and work that in. Um, even hopping into some of these other things right here. Like they kind of use the italics right there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it might go and be able to be a way to differentiate like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I also feel like if you're designing for uh, a packaging for something, you really have to be aware of the legal uh, information that has to be on the packaging. So um, you have the best experience probably. What is mm -hmm. it about uh, ciders? What has to be on the packaging? What's not supposed to be left out? So on, on the front, you'll pretty much need to have the alcoholic volume and then the fluid ounces. Now there is also stuff that you have to put on the sides and things like that. Um, so that would be like the general surgeon's warning. Um, you have to go and talk about where it's like brewed and packaged, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so you have to put the manufacturer as well? Is it legally? Yeah, you have to go and put that where it's ah, made from okay. and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, every country is different. So make sure when you're designing for your country or for a country um, that you put all the legal um, stuff on it, like the warnings and yep. yeah, all the information that's necessary. Yep, and exactly. And different industries have different things too. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. the FDA has a lot of stuff for food. Um, you know, there's sometimes you need like a nutrition facts panel for, um, you know, some kind of foods, but if it's a supplement, you need like a supplement facts yeah. panel. All the language can change depending on where you are. And even state-wise too, like mm -hmm. uh, we were just chatting before, and you know, we've been working on some cannabis uh, mm -hmm. stuff in Washington state, and they have like a ton of like regulations on that. Mm -hmm. um, and every state has their own little uh, logos that you have to, have to put on, like warnings and all that stuff. And they have to be certain size, so they cannot be too small. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and they have to have certain contrast to it. So yeah. that also all affects the the design that you're creating exactly working in these regulations like most of them depending on the mm -hmm. size they have have to be like something like you know two millimeters high or things like that um, but a lot of times you can get that access from you know the clients uh, will have that information from the mm -hmm. FDA or things like that that they can forward to you or if they don't have them you know always just ask again it's communication so mm -hmm. you know you don't have to feel bad if you don't know exactly which one because like we were saying there's mm -hmm. so much variation that you know just you can ask the client for the information that needs to be on there and mm -hmm. they can go and reach out to the person it works with uh, you know, their FDA or, um, you know, yeah. whatever kind of rep that they have. And also what I was always interested in is barcodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, barcodes have to be printed black on white, correct? Yep. Yeah, high contrast. They need high to have contrast. like a white background behind mm -hmm. it for the most part. And um, a certain size, right? Yep. Yeah, usually it needs to be about like 0.75 inches. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much minimum. So where do all... barcodes come from? <laughs> <laughs> I well, was always interested, where do people take this number? Like, <laughs> what is it for? I well, mean, they're very little, the stork brings them. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. I was always wondering if it's something um, that you have to register internationally. Is it something that you have to register nationally? Where do you register it? I feel like there is a bunch of like companies that maybe use the us not knowing what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's different companies that you can go to where you go and get the SKUs. Most of the time we have our clients go and get those mm -hmm. uh, because then you put in the product information and things like that. Um, but I think it's usually nationally um, and they'll go and grab it from there um, and they can go and send it over to you. Um, but it's usually up to them. I, I'm not sure what the sites are called exactly, but uh, typically they go and provide those over for us. Mm. Um, Okay. okay, so every single product. So if you have an apple crisp cider and you have a different kind of cider and different kind of cider, every every specific product has their own uh, code, right? Yep, exactly, because mm -hmm. it's all about how it scans. So, you know, in the system in grocery stores, um, you know, you need to scan that mm -hmm. and that's how you go and figure out, um, you know, what comes in, what the price is going to be, like, you know, kind of tracking and stuff like that. Because all mm -hmm. the companies need to have back end systems and stores need to have back end systems that, mm -hmm. you know, track inventory and things like that. So that's yeah. how it's associated to each one yeah. from there. And uh, there is also a, um, a question that came up from Mohammed: Why Pantone codes on Illustrator are very different from original website of Pantone company? Um, I think that's because Pantone's like updating more and you need to update like your color libraries and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, so, like, I think you need to buy like a code or something yeah, it's you like, get the library or something. Yeah, exactly. Like I think Illustrator comes with whichever ones like, was licensed then and then as Pantone updates, I think, yeah, you need to buy a code from them. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then you plug that into Illustrator and then it provides you with a new color library and then from there you'll have like more updated mm -hmm. Pantone. This print, what, how will it be printed on a can? Will it be um, in Pantone or will it be, uh, what's what's it gonna be? This won't probably be Pantone because it's, I'm the one going and deciding it's gonna be yeah. uh, like there, which means then it can be like silk screened on and things like uh -huh. that, put directly on the can. I mean, another option could be too, to go and have, um, you know, a wrap that's around it. And, uh -huh. you know, sometimes those are digitally printed, um, you know, with four colors, so then you wouldn't need the Pantone colors from there. So that will be CMYK then. Exactly. And then, yeah, it's also very important to uh, put the color codes correctly, right? So. Mm -hmm. Whenever you export the file later on, it needs to have the exact uh, codes for, for the right print. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. Um, I can try to find like an old dye line I have or something laying around. And maybe tomorrow we'll go over uh, oh, yeah, like, you cool. know, putting it on a dye line and kind of just how those are set up with the different yeah. layers and things I like think, that. Yeah, I think for people who never worked for like an agency or something, it will be really interesting to see yeah, definitely. how this really looks uh, in the industry. So yeah, awesome. I think this looks already super cool. Yeah. Yeah, oh, but like we were saying, dive into here. Um, you know, maybe we can go and edit this a little bit to go and give it some different uh, type contrast in there. Oh, it looks like it's faded away just because it's such like a, a faded type face. But um, let's see. Doesn't look like this one has it in here. But I mean, we could always go and skew it ourselves too. Um, I, I'm not sure if this one has an italic version or not to it, but you know, something that we do sometimes is, you know, if we don't have the exact font that we want to go and use for the first round, we'll go and put it together, um, you know, using the font or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe skewing the type or something like that. And then, you know, if the client locks onto this direction, then we'll go and, you know, buy the italic version or something mm -hmm. like that to go and mm -hmm. use from there when we're actually going through it. But then you're not just buying typefaces that aren't going to be used or yeah. anything like that. I think there's also some test versions to some typefaces mm -hmm. as far as Yeah, I know. some have te test versions and things mm -hmm. like that that you can go and use. Um, but for now we can go into um, object transform and then we can like shear it like a little bit. So if you preview it, you can kind of see. Ah, you know, there we go. Just a little little hack to go and do in there. Um, and you can edit the different degrees that you want to go and have it. So how drastic everything's going to be. Mm -hmm. there you go. Oh, now you're shearing the, oh, you're shearing only the text, okay. Exactly. Yeah, so then that puts it in there, gives it like a little bit of a difference between there. And again, I'm gonna do my you know, clicky thing. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, four. <laughs> exactly. So we know I have like nice spacing. Because the, the reason I use the clicks too instead of the distribute tool all the time with type is because a lot of times there's like a little bit of extra space. Like if you kind of track things out like a little bit, um, you know, you'll have like a little bit of extra space like on the side, like, you know, over here, like mm -hmm. at, at the edge. Um, so it like works a little bit better just kind of manually going and doing it until you outline it. Once you outline it, mm -hmm. typically we go and do that. And then once we outline it, then we go and use the distributing stuff when we're setting it up for print. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Yeah, and I think this could all be maybe tracked out like a tiny bit more. So like if you go over to this over here, you can kind of see the tracking. Like right now we have like 60 right here, but you know, maybe bump that it's up. It's all like about the details. More. Exactly. <laughs> do that. And we can and centered in there instead. So then if we edit anything, then it stays the same. And then again, we'll have to go and bring this guy out like a little bit more. Awesome. Robert is asking, Ron, what, uh, what made you want to get into the designing for food and beverage industry? Uh, it kind of just snowballed into there. Like I was saying before, um, I just did that project for uh, my one friend who had a deli. Um, and then from there, that company found me that did like all restaurant branding. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was like a nice switch up. Uh, you could go and do like, you know, a bunch of creative work because um, it was creating everything from scratch pretty much, like the brands from the ground up. So I mm -hmm. thought that was really cool. And I was like, yeah, I'll go and give it a try. And then I just kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, it just kind of worked out that way that obviously too, when I was doing all that food and beverage work, my portfolio just started getting mm -hmm. a lot of food and beverage work in it. So then yeah. food and beverage clients just started going and coming to uh, me as well, because that's what I had out there. So if someone typed in on Behance, like restaurant branding or something like that, yeah. I'd have projects that would start popping up from ah. there. Okay. Um, so it was kind of just like a natural progression. And I mean, I think that's like a good way to do it too. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about like finding your lane and, you know, finding exactly what you want to do. But I think in the beginning, it's nice to go and, you know, try a bunch of different things. Like I worked for a medical company when I first started, then I worked at a signage company where I did signs for a bunch of places. Mm -hmm. Then another agency that did a lot of tech stuff um, and like a little bit of like sports in there. 
Um, so, and then I went to the restaurant place. So I really tried like a bunch of different things and then the, you know, food and beverage stuff was just what started, uh, you know, sticking from there. And I started just getting more work that way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I feel like you don't need to put a lot of pressure, like that much pressure on finding exactly what you need to do. Like as soon as you graduate or early in your career, because it, it's just going to naturally kind of, yeah. you know, go that way. You will know, okay, I love food. Okay, I'm going to create something. Food. <laughs> exactly. It's so much fun, this chocolate packaging uh, and exactly. the chocolate is so delicious. <laughs> and the best part about doing food is you get a lot of free samples. <laughs> mm, that's great. Yeah. That sounds good. Or like catering photo shoots where they just bring like a ton of food there. Oh, it's like, what yeah. are you going to do after besides yeah, eat it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, after I took the pictures, can I eat that food now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's typically how it goes, which yeah. is always nice. Yeah, who doesn't like food, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Right, so. Cool. So yeah, so we're rolling with like 140 um, on the tracking there. So we just want to make everything nice and consistent throughout. Mm -hmm. So that kind of switches it up a little bit. I mean, there's just a small detail too, so it can go like a little bit smaller too to kind of keep working on that hierarchy a bit. We're starting to come together nicely. Victor is asking how he can submit the daily creative challenge. So if we jump onto my screen real quick, um, we'll see the daily creative challenge can be um, found on behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. And uh, here you will see all the information about your submission. Like here, for example, this is the today's challenge, August 26th, use 3D elements, and here you can get started. So basically it guides you through the whole process where you can submit your artwork. And later on, um, we will be, you can also join the community chat right here. And yeah, everything's basically on this page. And later on, we'll be reviewing your designs that I'm not gonna show yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, on the Discord channel, so. Yeah, so Matt, can't can wait to that. look at them. Yeah, me too. In 20 minutes yep. left. Time's ticking. Get them in there. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Mackenzie, for answering some of the questions that are in there about the process and everything. Yeah. Cool. So we'll check back in on our Photoshop design. So you, this is your smart object thing, so you just need to save this every time. Then it will update on your mock-up. Yeah, it's coming together nicely here. Yeah, it looks good. Love it. Cool. The colors work together super well, especially that gold off the can kind of really fits. Yeah, it into definitely this. brings it all together. It that almost way. looks elegant. Yeah, very, exactly. Very elegant. Which is nice because it has kind of like a little bit of a retro vibe with you know some of that yeah. roughing that we were doing before, but we also want to keep it like modern because you don't want it yeah. to look too dated or anything like that. Yeah. Um, cool. Another little detail here, like this is going like a little bit out, so. Our Right now our type sizes are a little bit all over the place because we're just working from the mock-up. Mm -hmm. You know, once we get into the actual thing, we'll have to go and work on it. But, um, you know, you might want this lined up like nicely within there. So it feels nice and separated. Mm -hmm. Renju is asking, what are the ongoing trends and logo designing to in 2019? <laughs> <laughs> it depends what industry you're in, I think, mostly. Yeah. I mean. There's definitely, you know, some resurgence in these kind of badge type things, like the retro kind of look to yeah. it. I mean, if you hop into, you know, if you go to some of the bigger brands, there's been a lot of the, the like, blanding that's been going on. Uh -huh. Like, where, you know, a lot of these fashion companies are kind of going to, like, you know, Simple Sans there for things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it really depends on, uh, you know, what industry you're looking at. Like, if you yeah. hop into, you know, some of the UI stuff, there's big trends in, like, the... Uh, like the illustration styles and things like that, kind of yeah, that like sketchy exactly. kind of look or, you know, the, yeah. the blob look or things like that. Yeah, or like <laughs> women with very, very long legs. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, really like bigger bodies and then all of a sudden they have like this like 10 foot long arm that's yeah. like protruding. And I feel like also combining very unusual colors, like um, Dropbox recently has been using this color combination of like light pink and dark green. Yeah. You know, I feel like that was a big trend in 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen it all over Behance. Many, many projects have been using this color combination or light pink and, and red. Yeah, light pink and red, yeah. light pink and purple. I've seen like a lot in yeah. like the UI, like kind of like web kind of stuff. I've seen a lot of that too. Yeah, or using colors that are like a little bit offset of like um, 
not exactly green, not exactly red, not exactly white, you mm -hmm. know, like something that's somewhere in between exactly. and combining it with something very unusual. I would say color wise, that's what I've noticed at least. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then also uh, using modern like print technology for embossing or, you know, when you when it comes to print that you're embossing things or um, yeah, making use of the three dimensionality of, of the print. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know, right now, I think it looks solid, uh, pretty yeah. much going through. There might be a, be a way to kind of like break it up like a little mm -hmm. bit more visually. So maybe it's, um, you know, playing with some other color or mixing it in there. Or, I mean, I do kind of like the, the monotone look of it. I think it helps like the retro go in there, but maybe we split the design instead or something like that and kind of break it up. Like, um, let's try something like this. We can go and bring this down to that. And we kind of put like the logo itself like mm -hmm. up on its own platform. I think that would kind of be nice and kind of help with that visual hierarchy that we were talking about before where, you mm. know, you really want that logo to go and stand out. So yeah. maybe we just like kind of switch it up a little bit and we can oh. roll with something on the bottom where it's split. Um, and then we'll have to go and push these towards the back. Um, so right now, obviously we lost all our type in there, but We'll get it back, don't worry. <laughs> Where is the type? Bring back the type. <laughs> so you're just gonna color it in the same color as the top part, yeah? Yeah, so switch it out, and then yeah. I'll just have to go and grab this hex color from over here so I can get this outline going mm -hmm. wherever it went. Awesome, Reg is saying, I like the output. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So we have that going. Now we just might need like a little bit more space. So I'll just check back to my mock-up to kind of see how we're doing. We have like, you know, a little bit of space down here. These guys can probably get bumped down a little bit mm -hmm. um, towards the bottom of the can. So we'll mm -hmm. probably just shift everything down like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good call, Tim. Um, is saying that you can also uh, access the entire uh, CC, try out Adobe Dimension. You can create your own mock-ups. Very true, you can also even put a mock-up on a three-dimensional object where you can actually like toss and turn it and see how it looks from all the sides and also create the whole, um, basically the whole um, scenery yeah. around it. Yeah, I really and, want to start um, diving into that a little bit more. It's so much fun. You basically can just take an Illustrator file like this, drop it on, and then put it on in place, and then it uh, adapts it to the surface. Yeah, the that's awesome. There's cans and bottles and all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and all the 3D stuff they were just doing for the creative challenge before that they were teaching. Yeah. Well, that, that's, um, not sure if that's the same kind of, uh, up, maybe. Well, you maybe. could probably, yeah, I think the dimension, you can probably apply it to the things, but then you could probably create some of your own stuff too yeah. if you were using the 3D tool, like earlier. Yeah, so there is a bunch of cool objects, like a lot of random objects too, like bushes and uh, flowers, whatever. Um, very cool. So much fun. Hey, Paul, good to see you. <laughs> Paul Trani's here in the house. Says, hey gang, good to see ya. I, uh, my first stream with, was with Paul Trani, actually. Oh, yeah? He was my host, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> that was fun. This looks <laughs> cool. I love it. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, I kind of like the split there. I think yeah. it goes and helps like add some like we were uh, saying. What is that on the right side? There is like a white space. So that's a white space right now. So we'll go and get rid of that oh, okay. uh, soon. But how we were saying in the beginning, um, mm -hmm. we had that layer that was in the back that kind of takes care of like everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so right now we just want to do it to kind of keep the dimensions in here, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the left and right. So we're kind of visualizing what the front mm -hmm. of this can is going to be. But the mock-up dimensions that we had have this like little bit of extra space, which covers some of the side of the can. Mm -hmm. uh, so for right now, I was just hiding that out. And then once we're uh, good with the design, then we'll probably want to go and, you know, roll that over. We'll mm -hmm. extend these boxes and uh, cover the whole entire can from there. Yeah, awesome. Sounds good. But. Yes, yeah, so I might go and put an outline on here and yeah, we just do something like this. We just extend them. So if you hold that option, you can go and scale things from the middle instead of having to scale each side like at the same time, mm -hmm. which is always nice. And you can do the same thing vertically as well, right? Yep, vertically, you can go up and down. Um, and then also if you do the corner, it does the whole thing too, mm -hmm. which is nice. So yeah, awesome. now if we save this guy over here, um, 
go and save that so you can see it extends across the whole side now instead of having those white edges and then oh, yeah. we've got like the there nice go. wrap going all awesome. around. Oh, this is super cool. <laughs> so exciting. I love how you aligned the whole uh, like text information uh, in one uh, row basically and then you put some like two little uh, things on the side that are basically, yeah, uh, exactly. right, right aligned to the, to the other part. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Take you out there and kind of expand like the can design there. But then you just have one centralized thing to look at when it's mm -hmm. sitting there, um, you know, on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And then also the nice thing too is, you know, by keeping a little bit of space on your left and right, obviously it'll look different once it's printed. Once it's three dimensional, it always mm -hmm. looks like a little bit different. Um, but the nice thing about leaving a little bit of space there is, you know, if it's butted up against, like if there's, you know, six cans right next to each other, it puts a little padding in between mm -hmm. each one of them. So then, you know, it's not like the text and stuff is overlapping like straight up on it. So mm -hmm. just like for shelf appeal, it helps like a little bit too. Definitely, exactly. I think it's very important to uh, imagine the product on a shelf and see how it's gonna be readable and make sure it's readable for people, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to turn the whole thing to be able to read one, uh, one sentence Exactly. You know? Yeah. And that's where it's always good too, getting like test prints when it's actually done. Because mm -hmm. um, when you're going through, like, you know, it might look like it's okay in the mock up and things like that, but, you know, you always want to try printing these things Prototyping. out. Before you're going Prototyping. Prototyping. Exactly. <laughs> Even if it's just at your home Very printer. Important. Once yeah. you get the dye line, just print out the label and find a can that's Print it know, on paper size. and exactly. put it around the can. That's yeah. it. Very simple. <laughs> exactly. It always looks yeah. different on your screen. And like even type testing out type sizes and stuff like that, yeah. it's always big to go and do it that way too. Yeah, put the can on the table, go further away, see how it's readable or not, and then adjust the design. Exactly. I think uh, prototyping is a very important thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, Paul is saying he likes your work. Very clean. You're good. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah, color code for this top one, it's uh, 632020 for whoever was asking. All right. Cool. And we have 11 minutes until yep. the reviews for the Daily Creative Challenge. So yeah, this is really the time you should be submitting. Otherwise, uh, it might be too late. <laughs> yeah, we want to be able to hop in there. Yeah. Get some feedback on it. Can't wait to see what everyone's been doing. Yeah, especially 3D is always very exciting. Exactly. Cool. So. Um, you know, I think this is a good foundation for the first round right here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some other stuff that we can go and do for right now, we can do, explore like some more colors or, you know, this is what yes. we like to go and do too, um, is it's always going to be a system mostly. Like even mm -hmm. if your client usually says, all right, we're just launching with Apple Chris, that's it. You know, pretty much for all the food and beverage stuff, eventually they're going to have different flavors or things like that. So, yeah. you know, we want to expand the color palette a little bit too, to, you know, cover some different flavors. Like, you know, if we we're going to have like sour apple or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously right now we're working through kind of quick, so we've kind of been going in like one funnel down the way, but mm -hmm. it's always good to kind of branch out and like, you know, try out some different things. So, mm -hmm. you know, doing that, I might just go and drag this guy over here, um, you know, and just start messing with like some different color options that we could go and have, um, you know. So excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. color experiments. Exactly. <laughs> like right now we kind of had that muted color, which is kind of nice, but you know, maybe we want something a little bit brighter that's going to going to stand off the shelves like a little bit so we can kind of come up to you know maybe something like that um it still has kind of that like you know tone back version we don't mm -hmm. want to go too bright because we're still looking for uh like a little bit of a retro look yeah. but um you know we might want something like a little bit brighter also a good thing to do too is you know if you're designing a cider go into the grocery store and look at all the different ciders that you have sitting around there exactly and then make something completely different <laughs> exactly and that's what you want to go and do but you also want to stand out. familiar Exactly. You want to have it some, somewhat familiar, but also a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So here I think the colors are very unique. Yeah, which I think is definitely good because like we were saying, everyone associates the things that they've seen before. So you still want them to know it's a cider, like, you know, maybe mm -hmm. because we're going with an apple crisp, we want to mm -hmm. be kind of in the red kind of, you know, and realm. typeface, I mean, I, I recognize like uh, c contemporary designs exactly. of uh, bottles or cans and this. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So, you know, tie some of those things in and, you know, go from there. Mm -hmm. Um, then yeah, you can put the secondary colors in here. Um, Heather is asking, when you're finished creating pieces for your clients, do you bounce your ideas of other artists before showing the client? How do you decide what feedback to take into the design? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, we actually have like a little Slack group between uh, me and some of my friends who are also designers. So mm -hmm. we have like a like critique, like little uh, uh, channel on that. So we'll always be posting like designs to that um, mm -hmm. and just kind of getting everyone's different feedback and things like that. And it's always mm -hmm. nice to get different opinions. We also have like um, some of our friends are like photographers or, um, you know, do a little bit of different things. So it's nice to have those like outside opinions too, like getting outside of like the designer's head to kind of see what they think. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of times we'll post things and like some of the designers be like, oh, I like this one, I like this one. And then the non-designer will be like, actually, I like this one better. And you're like, huh, it's good yeah. to go and go and figure it out. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. I, I've seen there is also groups. Um, I mean, there is also the Discord channel, but there is also like Facebook groups where you can uh, participate and comment other people's designs and post your own designs, get feedback. Um, I personally like to get feedback um, of my friends who are also designers, whom, uh, whose tastes I also kind of trust and, you know, they, they won't be criticizing it in, uh, in a bad way. They will be uh, giving inputs that are very valuable because I feel like on social media sometimes, uh, I mean, if people are not very professional, it can go down like very mm -hmm. harsh and, um, I don't know, that's not my favorite. I'd rather have uh, a community where people are creatives as well and, you know, where they actually are also putting out their work, mm -hmm. so. Exactly, and you know, just people you feel comfortable around with and yeah. also that, you know, if you post it out like, you know, into the universe, you also don't know who's giving you feedback and things like that. So, yeah. you know, just find some people you can go and trust and you feel comfortable around. Um, yeah, and then you can just go and bounce ideas that way. Um, mm -hmm. And it's always good to get feedback that way. And then a lot of times the client will go and you know show it to some different people and things like that, and oh, yeah. you know get the get the feedback. Hey, by the way, everyone. I showed it to my wife, and she wants a unicorn. On it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you always get some of that. So you gotta take it with a grain of salt. And a lot of things we'll do. A lot of times in the beginning, we'll go and um, you know have the discovery call with our clients and kind of figure out their goals. And you know we'll ask them what ways they want you know the project to be seen. Um, you know, what ideas want to pop into, you know, the consumer's head when they go and see it. So we'll kind of have a list of these words and things like that, mm -hmm. um, that we'll go and kind of stick to the whole entire time and refer back to this discovery document. So like, if that does happen where, you know, they're like, my wife wants to see a unicorn, unicorn, we're like, all right, well, what's the unicorn going to do to kind of achieve these goals that yeah. we're trying to hit with Exactly. Them? Yeah. You have to, uh, you have to really, uh, put everything together with a brand. Like if you're argumenting, you're argumenting for the brand, not for your personal opinion, right? Exactly. And by having like this little, you know, list of things to come and kind of like bounce back to, um, you know, that's a way to kind of take yourself out of it too. So it's not like yeah. I'm saying like, I'm right and you're wrong. We're saying, well, this is the list that we're trying to go and Yeah, it's like a legitimate achieve. argument, right? Exactly. <laughs> it takes away like the subjectivity from it yeah. and like, you know, makes it so you can go and bounce back to something that has more of a solid like foundation behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And five minutes left for the reviews of the D Daily Creative Challenge. Nice. So excited. Yeah, make sure to submit the work to the Discord channel, Photoshop. Yeah, definitely. And another way too, if you have a client who's like insisting on one thing, a lot of times, if we, if we don't agree with it, we'll try to go and talk them out of it to start with, but then if you know they keep on pushing and pushing for it, a good thing is it's like, all right, maybe we're gonna go and give them one option that has their feedback, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna do our recommended version from there too, um, which always, like, then we can go and say, like, I think this one's working better because of this, this, and this, yeah. where, you know, while you're one, we gave it a try, I think it's not, yeah. it's falling flat here or there. Um, so then you're still, it's not like you're just putting their ideas to the side and not doing anything with them. You're yeah. showing them, but then you get your own things going. Yeah, and I like the way you put it into words. It's working better, not, oh, I like this better, because that's a personal opinion. Exactly. It's working better for the for your brand, which is, uh, which is a real, um, yeah, real argument, a real reason to make a decision. Exactly. And that's what you want. You just want to take the opinions kind of out of it and have mm -hmm. more of a, you know, foundation what you're looking at yeah and usually when you're designing something and you're designing for a certain um, yeah certain target group you usually know their 
um, their opinion, how they would think about that. So that counts, not the actual person who is uh, making the decision, right? Exactly. I mean, it has to be all based on the end client. Yeah, and it's like a collaborative thing. Like, obviously, the client probably knows their client. Uh, well, their actual, your client knows their client. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have some good opinions, too, that you want to take in consideration. So sometimes, you know, something you might not have thought of right away, the client mm -hmm. can you bring that in and, you know, it kind of, um, you know, gives you a good idea going forward, too. Um, and just brings that different perspective. Like I said, it's always good to get that nine designer's perspective as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So then sometimes if I'm doing different color options, I want to see how it looks on the mock-up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll have a design here. And then if you hit Command-3, you can actually just hide it. And then Command-Shift-V will go and put, paste something in place. Um, so then I can just save over that. We'll go and hop into here, and we'll update in our smart object like we were just talking through before. Mm -hmm. um, then you can kind of see this. So this is an interesting color palette. Yeah. It kind of has like a bit of a uh, like different contrast between mm -hmm. uh, the orange and the red, but I think it's not standing out as much. Like the type's a little bit harder to read mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, so we the might... contrast is missing a little bit. Exactly. So we might want to go and bounce back, but mm -hmm. it's always good to just look at some different avenues and things like that. Yeah, and... it's also good to know what you don't want in order to know what you really want. Right? Exactly. So yeah, the nice thing of that, you can just go in. I'll take this guy and just be like, all right, I explored it, so I'll put it into my other file that I had going here that's not the smart object, and I'll just leave it hanging out there so then I know that I gave it a try. I never delete things like fully. I always have like a library of all the stuff that I went and tried. Um, but then if you hit Command Option 3, it'll just bring back whatever you hid um, back to the screen. So we'll be back to this design. Um, we can hop back in there, and we got that going. Um, and then like, you know, sometimes in Photoshop, we'll take it in and maybe it'll be nice to add like a little bit of texture in here, kind of push through some of that look that we had, um, you know, back here from some of these like faded brick walls, which is nice. Uh, so you can just go into your brushes, um, B brings the brush tool up. Um, and then you can go a couple ways. You can either go and pick one color and top on top, or you can go and um, make a mask, which I like to go and do like a mm -hmm. decent amount of the time. And then I have these that have like a little bit of distortion on them. Oh, Command nice. Option kind of brings it up and down. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, just going and clicking through that a little bit. We'll have to go and put a layer on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So then we can go and close that up. But So let's take like a sample of that, make a little box. Throw that guy in there. So then you can see it breaking through there. Mm. And then make a copy of that. And if you double click right here in the color, you can just sample it from there. So now you see we got like a little bit of texture going oh, in nice. here. That's cool. On there, just nice and subtle. Great. Um, and the nice thing about the mask is that you can go and edit that. So like, yeah. you know, if you don't like one of the blobs from it, you can just take like your brush back, hop into something similar right here, and then just like get rid of that if you want to, if you think it's like a little bit too dramatic mm -hmm. in places. So that's why I like going and using the mask when I'm adding texture. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, then you hop into here. It's just a subtle difference, but it kind of goes and adds like a little bit. Definitely. A little bit into there and brings back like that retro look right mm -hmm. here. But yeah, I think we're in a pretty, pretty solid place. And yeah, we got, what, 30 Yay. seconds until design feedback? <laughs> yeah. Super cool. I love Stashware. Yeah, there is a bunch of brushes you can use. What are your favorite brushes? Do you have any? Uh, I just get I get them from a bunch of different places. Sometimes I go and get them off like Adobe Stock. Um, you know, Retro Supply has some like cool ones on there too. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? I think it's Spoon Graphics. They have like a ton of free stuff that's pretty cool too, um, with different textures and uh, they have like a ton of different stuff, mockups and things like that as well. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's hop around different things like that. Awesome! And we're so excited to review your submissions for the Daily Creative Challenge. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Yeah, and we excited have to see what you guys did. First design here with a super geometric object in a um, uh, in a uh, snow environment. And as I can see, you can you added some very realistic appeal to it by dropping a shadow. Oh, that's and nice. yeah, I love it how you um, the color difference is very subtle but it makes it look, look very natural. What do you think, Ron? 
Yeah, definitely. The color difference is nice. Um, it's kind of cool how there's like a like void kind of in the middle of this like you know stark white landscape that has like a ton of details in there. So it's kind of like playing with like the dimension where it's like since it is a subtle uh, you know difference in like the different shades, like it's almost like it's going off into this void, but it's also there because the shadow's there. So it kind of makes you think like you know which one is it? Like are you going off into this like black tunnel or is mm -hmm. it something that's floating there? It's kind of cool uh, back and forth just position. I love it. This awesome. is definitely really cool. And I love how um, it's actually very, I think it's pretty trendy to play with this, you know, three dimensionality, like ver almost like a virtual reality of things. Exactly. Um, you know, putting objects into like nature that are very contrasty in their shape. Yeah, really like so, geometric and yeah. Yeah, opposite of what those mounds are. It's yeah. really nice. That's super cool. Great job. Amazing. Let's jump into the next one. Ooh, oh, that's really a, cool. A bunch of shapes here. I see. Super cool. Use 3D elements. Is a 3D element itself? <laughs> <laughs> How more 3D can it get? <laughs> yeah, 3D on 3D. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I see cones. I see flying uh, surfaces. Um, what do you think, Ron? Yeah, I think it's cool. It's nice how there's a nice like uh, you know view of his perspective coming from the bottom of the mound because since you can't really see that, you kind of like ground everything there. Then you have these like different floating elements coming through. It's almost like this like you know 3D element storms coming through with the, the background <laughs> of the, the ominous clouds and then the 3D coming there. But it's awesome how you know you can see the different shapes and kind of how the lights hitting everything. Like mm -hmm. whether it's like you know. Uh, the, the round like triangular shape mm -hmm. right there or you know the different uh, you know sides of the square shapes that are kind of all put together on the left side. Mm -hmm. um, nice balance between smooth and uh, clean and then kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Use 3D. Use 3D elements. Yeah. Um, really getting the message across too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got it. <laughs> We're using 3D elements. It's great. Um, I love how you put the color, like you really use the colors of the image in your 3D, 3D objects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels really cohesive, even in like the little gradient that's on top yeah, of the use 3D on the cone. Yeah, here uh, one thing maybe is that this is a little bit difficult to read because mm -hmm. uh, this top of uh, of this text kind of kind of uh, uh, yeah is very similar to the color of this cone. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes it pretty difficult to read. So maybe use a, a little bit more contrast. I could also imagine similar colors to here yeah. so that you would use a brighter, um, like almost white color for this. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Or if yeah. you are trying to make it kind of look like it's coming out from in, like, you know, maybe even just fade it a little bit more. I think right now it's like a little bit on that, like in between where it's not sure if it's starting to like look like it's extruding from it or trying to be on top of it, mm -hmm. but it's kind of in the between. So yeah, maybe go and either bump up the contrast or smooth it out a little bit. And then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's awesome though. And also, um, this is a great example of how you can use shapes uh, to create some kind of hierarchy because this almost looks like an arrow which is pointing somewhere mm -hmm. but you don't really know what's happening there so maybe you can really use this um, to point at something that you really want to show or you know um, you can also repeat this element to create some kind of like pattern look um, to this mm -hmm. right at the moment this is like a group here that I see a group of objects then this is a single object object and this is also kind of like a group of 3D objects here. So maybe if you want to like distribute it a little bit more um, to create, um, yeah, a more, how do you say, distributed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like maybe a little dimension kind of like yeah. add some space into there. Yeah, exactly. So, and then you can also play with the size. So objects that are more in the front are a little bit bigger and objects that are a little bit more in, this, in the back are um, like smaller. Yeah, that would give a nice sense of depth. Maybe putting some yeah. like kind of peeking out behind the mound so you could like mask oh, it yeah. off a tiny bit. Yeah, like yeah, I think yeah. that could be nice too. Yeah, otherwise good job. Mm -hmm. Great job awesome. experimenting. Okay. Uh, not sure if this is the 3D, not sure, but it looks cool still. Yeah, it is cool <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah. Nonetheless, yeah. Kind of has that like a uh, carved out look to it. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I love the colors. Out. This is exactly what I was talking about, like us mm -hmm. using unusual colors, like this neon um, with, a, with a bunch of texture here as well. I mean, this looks almost like the space. Um, 
Yeah, super cool. Yeah, the contrast is really nice on it. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. I love that. This is super cool. Yeah, definitely. There's some nice dimension in it with some of the like light beams being on top and some of them going on. I think that goes behind it. It's tough to tell with the glare. Maybe it goes on top of it, but if it doesn't, maybe it'd be cool if it kind of went behind it too to kind of make like some of it on yeah. top, some of it going back behind. Oh, I think yeah, that could right. be nice. And that will bring also the that will bring the bottle to the front a little bit, you know, to, exactly for it to be like the presented project uh, um, object. Or yeah, like maybe the top parts are behind it and the bottom parts like it on the front of it, so it's kind of like sitting within that little square yeah. shape. Yeah, I also really like how you use this. Um, this object, which is actually a very industrial, uh, yeah, th probably 3D object, and um, and you made something very artsy with it. I mean, it's super cool. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's nice how the pattern goes and moves through the top of the oh, bottle yeah. and stuff like that's, that. Yeah, that's really cool. Kind of works its way out. And how the shadows that you created here are um, giving the dimension to this. Um, I don't. I can't really read it. I'm guessing it's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it creates a really nice, uh, really nice three-dimensional effect to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some nice depth going on in it. Yeah, and how this color is a little bit brighter than the bottle, which makes it pop out more, which looks like it's more in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while still being cohesive with everything. Yeah, awesome. Super cool. Wow. Wow, those are cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a very similar background as used in the first um, in the first artwork that we saw. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, very interesting how how you put the light here because um, the whole picture seems pretty dark. Yeah. But then there is a very very tiny light that's very spotted on these um, on these round what is that capsules or yeah. Yeah, it's Something almost like, like a moonlight it's just suddenly going and hitting yeah, it. Yeah, right? Yeah. Almost like as if you're on a different planet. Yeah, well, that's how I was thinking. It felt kind of like Star Wars-y to me. Like, yeah, right? Kind of like out in the middle yeah. or something with those, like, you know, more industrial shapes, like, in there, like some kind of, yeah. like, ship or something like that when it crashed down. Yeah, right? And I feel like even the lighting kind of, you don't even see that. It's like the Arctic stuff that was in there before. It kind of seems more like almost like sand dunes or something like that, yeah. which is nice with the lighting. It all feels really, like, cohesive. Yeah, I like that. And also though the colors are very the color palette is very similar there is a slight difference which makes um these capsules stand out and it's that they have this more co cool color to it they have this more bluish color mm -hmm. uh, while the mountains here are more in the warm warmer tone like a warmer white off white beige um, tone which make, makes the capsule stand out through the contrast uh, warm cold definitely and the sky to that fits very well. Yep. Good yes. job. Ooh, we have the capsules here again. Oh, uh, nice. This has a mood. Like, this is a mood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's definitely right? like the moon. May inspired is... by those, the Mars uh, name list or whatever. Yeah. From before. Yeah, that's really cool. I can imagine this be like some some project in the wild where you can sleep under the stars. Yeah, definitely. You know, somewhere somewhere in the desert. Yeah, exactly. Looks yeah, you get cool. these little pods and you get to go out there and check it all out. It almost looks like there's a tree inside. Yeah, that's how I was wondering what was inside of it. Yeah. But yeah, maybe a tree on a different planet or something starting to grow uh, yeah, some life. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Giving the conditions for the plants to grow. Yeah, exactly. Cool that's stuff. super cool. No, this is definitely very well placed. Like I would say, this is this is a photo. Mhm, mm definitely. Really cool. Yeah, and the darkness behind it just goes and helps, you know, bring it to the focal point of the the yeah. pod things. Ooh, here we have a 3D frame placed into the picture. Oh, that's awesome. Karate. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah, this looks really nice too. Yeah. It's cool how there's like the different shapes and stuff like built on top of each other. I like like the line work throughout the frame. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really adds like the dimension in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe maybe one thing you go and do is add like a little bit of shadow to the bottom of it to make it like feel like a little bit more grounded on top of yeah. uh, the table. Yeah, I would put the shadow like right here. Mm -hmm. So you a little bit further to the left. Exactly. And also, I would make the shadow end by the end of the table because at the moment. The shadow basically seamlessly goes from the table to the wall, which is not, I mean, 
there are two different surfaces, so there needs to be some kind of difference in the shadow, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I will put the shadow here along the table, and then I don't. I wouldn't even make it continue on the wall. Yeah, it would what, just what come. Do you think? Yeah, I think it would just come on the table because your light's coming from above too. Yeah, so it it's wouldn't coming be going from up. here, exactly. so the shadow will go like right here, mm -hmm. and only until here. But that's like the only thing. Yeah, I think the rest of it's a great, yeah. uh, great start. It's like nice how there's Good like work. photography mixed in with it and everything. A lot yeah, of different media. That's super cool. I'm wondering if that's like a personal image or, or if that's something that you found. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. You guys did some great work. Yeah, I love the variety between everything. Yeah. Let's see what else is there. Yeah, that seems to be it. Wow. Let's see if that is more. Oh, no, that's something that we already saw. Awesome, guys. Super cool work. Continue experimenting with 3D objects. And uh, I guess we're going to jump back to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 there's one last one oh, that awesome. just came in. Let's look through that real quick. Ah, nice. That one's cool, too. I love the colors in it. Yeah, it definitely separates from the, like, the this artwork separates from the colors around it mm -hmm. here, right? So everything here is uh, grayscale, and then there is this poppy, colorful picture that definitely um, is being presented right now. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I see there might be some uh, light that comes on here on the on the picture frame to make it more look more realistic. Mm -hmm. And then since the light is coming from this side partially, there should be maybe like a little shadow around this area, right? What yep. Yeah, a little bit of shadow there, and yeah, kind of like how it looks like maybe there's a window or something on the other side, but mm -hmm. yeah, bring some of that light in and kind of where the window frame is, like across the painting, that might be nice, and then yeah. Uh, yeah, just like it. I see on the top like a little bit of how that like top headlights like oh, putting some yeah, light on there right here. Mm -hmm. But maybe on like the one coming from the right it looks like that beams pretty big So maybe just some subtle subtle yeah. light that's coming yeah, in from there right too here, to yeah. kind of highlight that or same on the left side, too mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I agree. Some but sun. otherwise really cool work. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Awesome. The contrast is cool Yeah, it's kind of like what we were talking about before with some of those like trends where mixing like the different bright colors together yeah. and stuff like that with like you know, the green and the bright blue there's like the red mm -hmm. mixed with the purple and that's yeah. nice too. Super cool. Thank you so much for submitting your artwork. And we're going to jump back to the um, Charred Apple Cider. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what's the difference between a cider and a hard cider? Cider is no alcohol. Hard cider, there's oh, okay. alcohol in it. Obviously. <laughs> That's where you get it. Huh? Okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Hudson Valley is like known for like a lot of like apple cider places where like in the fall like everyone goes up and there's like apple cider donuts that you go and get from there that are like donuts? so good. Yeah, they're apple cider donuts. You never had one before? No. Uh, you'll have to have one. Okay, that's something worth trying. It sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, they're and really good. And there's a bunch of like orchards and stuff around there where they make them like really fresh. And you go up yeah. there, you go apple picking, get some donuts, all that good stuff. Nice. <laughs> I can imagine there's probably cider ice cream as well. Yeah, I'm sure there's got to be at this yeah. point. We have uh, in San Francisco, we have this place um, called Stinking Rose and there is all garlic. Oh, it's yeah? all garlic. All the dishes are with garlic or containing garlic, and then there's also garlic ice cream, which is, <laughs> I didn't try that yet. I was gonna but ask if you tried it or not. It sounds crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It might be one of those things where it sounds weird, but it's actually good. Sometimes you get those weird combinations like that. Yeah, because actually, if I mean, you think about it, baked, baked garlic is actually a little sweet, you know? Yeah, exactly. Huh. Working that in there. Well, let's see. Cool. So we're tweaking on a very, very detailed. Yeah, we're hopping into some details now. Mm -hmm. Since we have the, pretty much the whole layout going, make sure these are nice and aligned. Mm -hmm. Give that like a little bit more space there. Um, and then like as a whole, wanna make sure our spacing's like consistent throughout here. to start bringing some of those details together so it's nice and consistent. Also sometimes, um, even though you want them to be even, it's nice to give an extra one on something that you want up top from something mm -hmm. because just visually, um, 
you know, the center point on like a piece of art or, you know, whether it's packaging or something like that, it tends to visually just optically fall. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll give like a little extra click to something that's sitting on top of something like a line like this or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so that's like a nice little thing to go and yeah. add into it just Similar to keep Similar to mind. when you have uh, line, lines on like dark, for example, here where we see the apple crisp, um, it tends to, the darkness, the dark color, it tends to disappear in the bright color, right? Because mm -hmm. we see the bright color as more light, meaning, um, yeah, you know, sometimes when you see uh, light coming from, from, from the other side of an object, mm -hmm. And um, and the object itself kind of seems to disappear a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, gotta yep. be careful with that as well. Yeah, so I think we're in a good place pretty much with this right now. What I might do is go and hop over into this other master file that we had here that we originally started out with. Um, and I can go and paste this guy in so it's like sitting there. Um, and typically when we go and do branding and packaging too, we also go and have some different uh, logo lockups that we'll go and do along with it. So, you know, this one's nice with all the details and stuff, but you know, if it got really small, you couldn't really read it. So you might need to go and, you know, hop into something else like this where we kind of mm -hmm. take off that top part from there um, and kind of make the logo system responsive. Because as you can see, when I get farther out, you can see the charred apple, but you can't go and see like, you know, these details or mm. even the even the New York and Hudson Valley get a little bit small. So you know, maybe we go and take away some of that stuff too. Um, we can go and work with this logo since it's outlined and stuff um, and all kind of set up. But yeah, so maybe we go and make like a different variation. I'll just make these black so they're nice and easy to go and see. Mm -hmm. um, FF is asking, when designing a can, does the design color uh, match, should match the color of the content of the can? Uh, it really depends on Oh, I was just rereading that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really depends on, are, are you referring to, I'm guessing the background and then the, the text Probably, on top yeah. of it? Um, yeah. I think it really depends on your design that you're having. I mean, t I went and did this route right here because we we're going for something more vintagey and we felt like a lot of the, um, you know, vintage kind of looking things had more like monochromatic kind of stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, there is not a big color use, right? So here we only have two colors, really. Exactly. I feel like I feel like in the in the older times, people were trying to avoid a lot of colors mm -hmm. just because of the old printing exactly. techniques. You know, uh, if you have uh, something that has like ten colors, you have to go all over it ten times. Exactly. You know, and if you have two colors, it's easier. Yeah, you just throw down the one and then put the next one on there. So yeah, it was definitely dictated by that. But then you know, now even though we can do more colors, if we want to kind of pull up some of those vintage vibes like yeah. that's kind of a, a way to go um, which is nice um, but yeah depending on it, if you want something more modern like typically we go and use like more colors than this mm -hmm. uh, in like a decent amount of our designs um, usually you know headers will go and have one color then body copy might be like a black or a gray or you know something mm -hmm. that will go and stand out like a little bit more too and won't like pop as much as the headers to kind of work on that hierarchy that's going through yeah um, so really it depends on your design you know what you're trying to achieve with it um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, we'll kind of go and uh, do some different like logo types um, and variations. Mm -hmm. So then there's like um, good ways to kind of use it throughout. Cause I mean, this might be just be on a cam, but then they also might have events where they need it like in mm -hmm. a horizontal version, um, you know, in a stacked version, something small, mm -hmm. um, you know. On and tomorrow we're gonna be creating some more mockups, right? Exactly, so yeah. So we can see the logo on different objects exactly so typically when we do a packaging project we'll go and start off it will go we'll do the brand identity and packaging together mm -hmm. if it's for a cpg project mm -hmm. um because that's going to be the main vehicle so i think it's important for the client to go and see that but then um, we also want to show them how it will go and look besides that because that mm -hmm. is also not the only way that they're going to go and see it um so we'll go and kind of do everything hand in hand but today was kind of getting like the logos or the packaging stuff like mm -hmm. kind of set and then tomorrow we'll expand it and we'll also put it into a brand presentation too to kind of see how it all looks when it comes together mm -hmm. and um you know what we usually ship off to a client yeah awesome um how do you usually send your uh, presentation to the client with an email or do you put it in on a Dropbox folder? We like to present as much as possible um, going and doing it, but usually it's just a PDF and then we'll mm -hmm. email it over to them too. Um, do you also do a conference discussing it or? Yep, usually we'll try to go and do a video conference so mm -hmm. we'll share our screen and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then chat through. It's just nice being able to go and talk through it with them and yeah. um, you know, to kind of tell them what we're thinking because 
like I was saying kind of in the beginning, you know, we kind of can see something, but maybe they can't, or like we'll make associations that we're like, oh, this is so clever. And like, they might not get it right away. And then yeah. they could throw it out. And, but then if you tell them that that's what you did, they'll be like, oh, yeah. I really like that. Yeah. And you know, like the kind of like- I'm doing the same. I also really like to do a video conference uh, for the initial designs. So I can mm -hmm. actually see the reaction of the of the client to the design. Exactly. Right? Like you can really see, sometimes they won't tell you what they really liked and what they don't, or maybe they, they're not sure, but, I really like to um, not show them anything before, jump mm -hmm. on the conference call, and then really share my screen and share the presentation with them and, and show them the designs one by one, mm -hmm. seeing their reaction. I think it's uh, very useful. Yeah, it's always nice seeing that just natural like reaction from there too. Yeah. And another thing we also like to do is when we're doing a discovery call, like if possible, we'll make it a video because it's nice just to see that person. We actually yeah. have like a lot of clients who are here on the West Coast and I'm from yeah. New York. Um, so we actually haven't met like a ton of our clients. Same here, yeah. same here, yeah. Yeah, so it's just nice going and like, you know, getting on a call together, going and be able to like talk it out and kind of just see that it's like a human on that side, a human on this side. Yeah. And, um, Do you also have that sometimes that you writing, like a client uh, gets in touch with you and you're kind of like writing and you have the Im an imagination of how they might look like, but then they see you see them on the call and they look totally different. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, there's always that. We always do our fair share of the internet stalking if we can before checking out their social media and stuff like that to try to get an idea, but yeah, it's always funny. Just kind of the picture you have in your head or like, it's funny when you go and are emailing back and forth and you know they speak a certain way over email. It's like, you know, maybe really direct and then yeah, you get on yeah, the yeah. video and they're like the friendliest person, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like things like that. It's just, it's yeah, the visual. communication is totally different from emails. That's yeah, sure. exactly. Oh, I like this lockup. Yeah. This is super cool. Yeah, it's nice to just give that like little bit of variation between mm -hmm. everything. Um, yeah, this could be something that's uh, being used on a website or something, right? Exactly, because, yeah, in the header, you might not want, you know, this, like, tall thing giving you this massive yeah. header on top. Yeah. So it's always good to have something that's, like, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do something yeah, like that. this. Maybe it's below. Maybe we go and try one where it's above. Right in. <laughs> Tim is saying, sometimes I wish clients were like the Spice Girls. I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. <laughs> 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 That'd be the dream. That's what you need there. Yeah, but then it's also good to have the clients that don't really know what they want and they trust you. So you have a little bit more freedom to create something really good and beneficial for them. <laughs> the, the trust, that's the, that's the key. Yeah, true. But yeah, as long as you can go and get that, that's the kind of client you want to work with. And if they don't trust you, maybe they're not the right fit for you. Yeah. Which is kind of where you have to go from there. True. Yeah, but see, now we're starting to see like a logo system right here that we're going through. Um, you know, so you have your main lockup, then it goes in kind of, you can see kind of how it progresses like down for screens and smaller sizes right there. Um, and then you just have different use cases depending on where it is. So you can still have something recognizable. Mm -hmm. You know, you still get the vibe of it, you know, mm -hmm. whichever logo lockup that you go and use with, but it kind of gives them this library that they can use on these different materials, whether it's like a business card or, you know, a horizontal banner or, you know, maybe a really vertical banner. It kind of, you know, you just want them to have that library so they have all the options. And because the thing that you don't want them to do is start going and, you know, taking it on their own hands and, you know, taking the type sizes and making it bigger and putting it all different areas. Yep. So that's why it's always good to have a little bit of a uh, brand guidelines there, show them what yeah. they can do, what they can't do. And Do you um, provide them brand guidelines automatically if they uh, just want a logo, for example, or? Typically we try not to just do straight up logo mm -hmm. uh, packages because you know, the logo is only one part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And we just believe that, you know, you kind of, you're not really giving them everything if you just give them a logo from there. So we'll always yeah. try to go and sell them onto a brand identity package. So that usually includes like logo, color palette, typography, um, you know, any illustrations or icons if they need mm -hmm. it. Um, and from there, then they can go and have like more of a library to go and, you know, expand to everything. And then we'll typically give them a, a brand guidelines document with that just to ensure that mm -hmm. they can stick to it. And if they send something to a vendor, then they can use that. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. It's very important to give some brand guidelines and um, for them how to use your design work in the future. And yeah, that will be it for today. And we're looking forward to see you all guys coming back tomorrow yeah. and as we're going to be doing more mock-ups and the presentation of the hard cider. And it's going to be so exciting. Thank yep. you so much, Ron. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here.